there is the Queen City. It's where I grew up, and it's the city where Cincinnati and Xavier basketball have reigned supreme. But you can't ignore what's going on over here on this side of the river at Northern Kentucky University. Because in just their seventh season of Division I basketball, this team has already claimed a Horizon League championship and made an NCAA tournament appearance. You want star power? How about Drew McDonald? This kid averages a double-double, 20 points and 12 rebounds per game through his first four league contests. Northern Kentucky's opponent tonight, that'd be the Wright State Raiders. Their rivals from just about an hour up the road in Dayton. Last year, Wright State knocked Northern Kentucky off the top of the mountain in the Horizon League, winning at Motor City Madness and earning the trip to the NCAA tournament. And you want a counterpoint to Drew McDonald? How about Loud and Love? Last season's freshman of the year is having a solid sophomore campaign. At 280 pounds, his footwork, his artwork, and his energy, infectious. And welcome to another Horizon League Friday, this time from Highland Heights, Kentucky, the Northern Kentucky Norse and the Wright State Raiders with Brooke Weisbrod. I'm Jordan Burnfield. You look at the Horizon League standings right now. It goes to show you anything can happen in this league. We expected Northern Kentucky to be near the top, and they are Detroit Mercy right now atop the league. But Wright State in that middle portion where most of the teams find themselves here in weekend number three. And so with that, we have a game tonight that could really separate one of these teams in Northern Kentucky, the best record of any team in the league overall. They're 13 and four on the year, and they know they gotta get through Wright State, who won this tournament last year, to get back to the NCAA tournament, bro. And of course, if it's Friday night, Jordan, it's gotta be Horizon League basketball on ESPN. We've been loving these matchups this season already, seeing a lot of nail biters, some close games, and we certainly expect this one to be all of the same as this rivalry continues to bud between these two teams. Parker Ernst towels in the first bucket of the game as you now take a look at the starting five for NKU. They've used this lineup for the last eight, nine games. Jalen Tate began the year in the starting lineup, but then had an injury and has been coming off the bench ever since. We'll notice something for the Raiders a little bit different in their lineup, but we'll get to that coming up. Parker Ernsthausen getting the start along with Loud and Love. Bill Wampler out of the starting five for WSU. And the matchup you're going to want to watch tonight is Drew McDonald on Loud and Love. McDonald always drawing the other team's toughest offensive assignment. Loud and Love, no easy guy to try to guard. That's 280 pounds, solid muscle. McDonald's going to have his hand full, but. He's got some size too, 6'8", 250 pounds. You're seeing two of the strongest guys in the league go at it tonight. Absolutely, preseason player of the year and back-to-back -back seasons is Drew McDonald. Of course, loud and love freshman of the year last year in the horizon. It goes right in on McDonald, but can't get that one to fall. Zanai Robinson, new to the team, driving towards the bucket. And now a foul after Faulkner fell down on loud and love. Trayvon Faulkner picking up his first foul. You take a look at John Brandon, the head coach in Northern Kentucky. All he's done is win Brooke four years. Could win his 70th game already tonight if they can pick up the victory. And he's 35 and 23 in the Horizon League. And I thought it was interesting what he had to say to us in shoot around today was about looking at practice plans from a couple of years ago because this team, well, they're a lot different, a lot younger. You only have a couple of older guys, especially Drew McDonald, to count on to understand the NKU way and the NKU system. Parker Ernst towels in the miss on a three try, the rebound to McDonald. And here comes Trayvon Faulkner, the freshman from Harrodsburg, Kentucky. Ooh, good ball fake. And the drive by McDonald, too strong on the shot. Loud and Love comes up with it. And hands off for Gentry. Yeah, Cole Gentry for Wright State. And it was interesting, John Brannon called him the head of the snake, and he's been just as dangerous as anybody. If anybody is gonna prepare for Wright State, you better have Cole Gentry at the top of your list as a threat. Gentry leads the Horizon League in assist to turnover ratio, fifth in assists and 13th in points. Now three from the top of the key, a little bit too strong from Dantez Walton. McDonald will keep for Northern Kentucky.
Sharp into the paint. And NKU on the board. I mean, this is a guy with a name true to form. Tyler Sharp is playing that much sharper basketball this year. We talked to him before the game. He said, hey, I was in the gym three times a day. 6 a.m., I was going to practice with the high school guys after they were out of school, and then I would go running at night. He also had a major change in his nutrition and his diet. You just see how much faster and more impactful he's playing this year as you see Love with a nice half hook. Speaking of guys that change their diet and their yeah. nutrition. Love down 50 pounds from his time in high school to now. Looks a lot different than the pictures we pulled up on Google of him in high school. Yeah, former offensive lineman is loud in love. It's always interesting to see how players transform their bodies when they get to the college level, because that's how you survive, right? Yeah. Hey, you, you could say the same. Aren't you down at something like 30, 35 pounds at one point? Yeah, but I don't have to go run on the court. <laughs> but you got to fit in a suit, my man. You got to do something right. I do. Got to look decent for TV, right? <laughs> Mark Hughes, the kick to Alan Best, who drives into the paint to a double and leaves off for Love, who lays it in. Alan Best, such a good role player and facilitator. You know, Jordan, he's managed games very well. He's not the primary ball handler, but he creates for other guys. Tyler Sharp again, this time for the wing, off on the three, and there's Vest to grab that rebound. Allen Vest now for Wright State. And trying to get it inside for Love, but off his fingertips and out of bounds. It'll be Northern Kentucky basketball when we come back. Top two teams picked to finish at the top of the league in the Horizon League, and they're meeting tonight for the first time. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. And Expedia, everything you need to go. Last two champions in the Horizon League meeting tonight, and there's Scott Nagy, the head coach and the reigning Horizon League Coach of the Year at Wright State, who's done an outstanding job transitioning over from South Dakota State. This program getting back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2007 last year. And you could see that these two teams really asserted themselves last season and you kind of figured one of the two would probably end up representing the Horizon League in March Madness, and it turned out to be Scott Nagy's Wright State Club. But Northern Kentucky won the Horizon League regular season title, and they're going to be real strong yet again, 13-4 and four on the year and 3-1 and one in the league. I think the common theme, Jordan, that you could see with both of these teams and why they excelled is that they both commit to defense. You're looking at two of the stronger defensive teams in the league tonight as Alan Vest comes up with a steal. Now Gentry works his way into the paint, and the floater will not fall. That's Chris Boat off the bench to grab the rebound. Seven foot one, 240 pound Chris Boat. One of two seven footers in this league. The other one, Ahmed Ishmael at IUPUI. Into the paint goes Sharp and lays it in. When you watch Tyler Sharp play, he's. He's so good, as is Cole Gentry, actually, keeping the dribble alive and not killing the play by picking the ball up in a bad spot. They're great at crowding into the, into the paint, into the lane, and if they don't have something, they'll pull it back out. Foul coming up. As you take a look at Bill Wampler, who just checked into the game, was starting for Wright State, but look at his numbers since he was now made a player coming off the bench. 17 points per game, and the three-point shooting percentage is way up. And, Brooke, just talking to Bill and talking to Scott Nagy and some of the other coaches, it's all about confidence for Bill, and they feel that he's getting it back coming off the bench. You know, that UIC game, that was tough. He was just 3 of 16 from the floor, 2 of 10 from 3. So there's times, Jordan, where if you you allow the game to come to you, even if that means coming off the bench, it's a little more comfortable, I, I would say, mentally. 
You know, it's, it's hard to accept from an ego perspective, but sometimes it allows you to work into the game. Scott Nagy was saying that when he talked about it with Bill Wampler, he wanted to make sure that he knew that it wasn't a demotion. It was just something to get him going offensively. He plays basically starter minutes. As a former player, how would you have taken a conversation from your coach where they explain to you that you're not starting? So you, my coach tells me I'm not starting. I got to come off the bench. How am I going to take it? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to take it. <laughs> me, I, I would pout. Um, I would ask why. I would fight it. Uh, definitely was a pride moment, you know, in, in those days where you're just trying to get as, as many minutes as you can, right, and start. But I will say this. My sister got married, and I missed a practice. So when I came back, I actually told Coach I didn't want to start because, wow, you see it shot get right to the bucket. But long story short, I said I didn't want to start because I had missed practice, but no coach is telling me I'm not going to start. <laughs> not having it. Well, Bill Wampler handling the role pretty well. Here's Cole Gentry going to the bucket and the miss. And he's had two close baskets he's missed. Meanwhile, Tyler Sharp, oh, he's ready to check. pop the lid off, <laughs> yeah. isn't he? Way short on that one. <laughs> Tyler Sharp, a good start tonight. And Sharp has been a great story for Northern Kentucky. Began his collegiate career at Louisville, was a walk-on there, leaves the team to join Northern Kentucky, just wanted a better opportunity, and joins this team as a walk-on, plays really well last year off the bench, this year earns a scholarship, and now is not only in the starting lineup, but a major contributor to this team. Mm -hmm. He's second on the team in scoring. Yeah, and his three-point shooting is a lot better also. He's hit a couple of threes in at least 17 games this year. And as you saw in that replay, not only is he going downhill at full speed, but he's able to change direction, keep the defense guessing, and play under control. He wasn't at a pace where he was taking a bad shot. Sharp, just talking to him before the game, said that when he found out he was getting the scholarship, his mom cried. She was so overjoyed. And Tyler said, really, he had to bet on himself because when he left Louisville to join a program where he was going to be a walk-on, you know, he said he had other offers in D2, maybe NAIA, where he perhaps would have gotten a full ride. Not here, but earned it because of his play. Yeah, I'd cry, too, not getting that bill in the mail anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Tuition bill's nothing to play with. Zanai Robinson picking up the foul. A grad transfer from Norfolk State and Bill Wampler at the free throw line for the Raiders. Well, tomorrow we'll have an afternoon ACC College Hoop doubleheader for you on ESPN. Noon Eastern, 12th ranked Tar Heels hosting Louisville at the Dean Dome. Then Zion Williamson, number one Duke in Tallahassee to take on the number 13 Knowles in a sonic blockbuster. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. Saturday showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Wright State sending the double team over to Drew McDonald. Alan Vest get another shot. We've got a few offensive rebounds early in this game, Jordan. These two teams are going to fight defensively, top two in scoring defense in the league. You get every basket that you get, I think, in this kind of game is earned. Yeah, no doubt. You can't take them for granted. I mean, we've seen a couple of missed layups here from Wright State, some turnovers. you got to value every possession. Malachi Smith had that one go off his fingertips out of bounds. It brings us to a timeout on the floor. NKU with a one-point lead. John Brannon, after entering the Horizon League, quickly became one of the league's best coaches because since he's been in this league, all they have done is win. They have a Horizon League tournament championship, a regular season championship under their belt, and this year with the best record in the league overall. And we're in an arena that used to get, what, 500 people or so in here to watch the game. We've got the lower bowl sold out, 9,000 possible for tonight. So, you know, you're talking about a program that John Brandon came in, built up, and did it the right way. And take this league over by storm and take it D1 by storm. And I remember the days of Northern Kentucky being a Division II powerhouse. Of course, growing up around here, one of the schools definitely I considered going to. Had I gone there, I might have a national championship ring. 
Yeah, this has been a real good program since they've gone D1, was excellent in D2. And speaking of excellence, Drew yeah. McDonald has been excellent since he stepped foot on this campus. He's so comfortable taking that outside shot. It's not, not often you see a big guy who's able to do the traditional big man work on the block and then come out and shoot some threes as you see Love go to work on the block himself. Loud and Love now with six points for Wright State. And McDonald working against Love at the top. The North so good at keeping the ball movement moving. You're not going to see a guy dribble a bunch. Let's see, one or two dribbles pass. That's a nice strip. And it comes out to Love, and here comes Wright State with Malachi Smith. Lost his footing and went down, and now a foul will be called against Northern Kentucky. We go against Dantez Walton, first on him. The junior out of Lima, Ohio. What do you no, think? I think he just lost his footing. Yeah. Play on here. And there's a near steal out of bounds. Almost came to us. Were, were you ready? Your hands ready? Hey, you're the basketball player among the two of us. <laughs> if anything, you, I'll, you, say, <laughs> I'll save it, George. Don't worry. I would never let a ball touch that pretty face of yours. Come on. I, well, I appreciate that. I'll do my best when the ball goes through my hands and hits me in the face. At least it didn't hit you. Bill Wampler underneath lays it in. Good play by Wampler. Simple play. Power dribble. Quick ball fake, the pump fake, and go back up strong. You don't have to come in and try to do a lot. As we mentioned, after that UIC game, you know, such a poor shooting performance, you got to start with the fundamentals again. And that means drive, trying to get close to the basket. Make it easy for him. Here's Jalen Tate into the paint and puts it in over Vest. Tate. He's got good hang time, Jalen Tate. Shooting 57% from the floor this year. Three season second team All Horizon League player, Brooke, who had a little bit of an injury earlier in the season. That's why he's been coming off the bench, but third on the team in scoring, third in rebounding, has been so solid since joining this program. Here is Love. In on McDonald and puts it in. A couple of spin moves for Loud Love. You know, he's another guy that doesn't panic when he gets the basketball. Allows the defense to get set up, makes his move based on how they guard it. Loud and Love, always somebody that you have to watch for, was dealing with that ankle injury right when conference play started. Looks to be moving a lot better now. Here's Alan Vest on the wing for three off target. McDonald's got it. McDonald again from deep, and the big man hit another one. I like it. I like the rhythm three for McDonald. I don't know who he's looking at over here this way after he hits those threes, <laughs> but he's got this cool guy look all over his face. I love it. Drew McDonald, sixth all-time in career points at Northern Kentucky. Fourth in the Horizon League in scoring right now. And Mark Hughes gets that one to rattle home. Drew McDonald's going to go down as one of the all-time greats that's ever played here in Northern Kentucky. Inside, the miss from Tate, but grabs the board. Yeah, Mark Hughes had that ball in his hand, just didn't pull it in close enough. McDonald's going to take another three. He was feeling it. Another heat check shot, right? That's right. You get the stars out tonight, so why not? 38% three-point shooter is McDonald. Here's Gentry now for three. That rattles out. And now a foul at the top. And as loud and love will be called for his first as he bumped McDonald. Well, Drew McDonald, more than 1,700 career points at NKU. Here's three more. Number one, Duke has a rising star.
Hold up, let me get up in it now. I'm here to win it now. But the Seminoles are issuing a no-fly zone in Tallahassee. Number one, Duke. Number 13, Florida State. Saturday at 2 on ESPN. Well, number one, Duke, and number seven, Kansas, highlight our big Monday doubleheader on ESPN after SU and Duke will meet. Zion Williamson and the Blue Devils host the Orange at Cameron Indoor, 7 Easter. Then it's off to Allen Fieldhouse, Longhorns and Jayhawks, both games. Also on the ESPN app, so you can watch them anywhere. Syracuse Duke, that's going to be fun. Yes, it will. You saw Zion up close and personal earlier this week. Well, I mean, I've seen him in high school in the McDonald's All-American game, the Jordan Brand Classic, but to see now in person some development in Duke in his freshman year, it's just incredible, Jordan. I don't know how to explain how athletic this young man is, and he doesn't want to be known as just a dunker, and I can understand that because that's not going to be around your entire career. He is starting to turn into a better outside shooter. He was, uh, I believe he was three of four, actually, from three against Wake Forest. And so I just love the way that he's thinking ahead like that. Like, hey, don't pin me down as just the dunker, as the guy that's going to win the all-star, you know, the slam dunk contest in the all-star game. I'm here to win championships, and I'm here to build a legacy. Seems pretty humble, too. Definitely. Super humble, and his eyes light up when you talk about his teammates, and that, to me, makes a, a big difference. When you're talking about superstars, who to take in the draft, I mean, to me, that's a reason to take him alone, is how good he makes his teammates. Well, this guy at the free throw line say a lot of the same things about him. Drew sure. McDonald, when we talked to John Brandon, the head coach of the Norse, before this game tonight, he was saying, if you ask anyone in this league, you, he even mentioned Commissioner LeCrone of the Horizon League, he said, this is the kind of guy that you want representing your team. And Drew McDonald has had a great career for Northern Kentucky and really is the focal point as a player for why this team has had so much success. Great athlete, terrific student, community service oriented, nice guy. What more could you ask for? And that's going to be a charge. They have offensive sure foul on Drew McDonald. That is foul number one. Parker Ernsthausen does a terrific job of not using his hands. Getting in front of McDonald. And McDonald handing the ball back to the officials even respectfully. <laughs> He's just a nice guy. He is. And now Hughes into the lane. Shot will not go. An offensive foul against Mark Hughes. A little bit off balance going to the basket there. And Scott Nagy <laughs> He's not happy said, with that Are you call. kidding me? I myself was a bit confused. But it's Northern Kentucky basketball. Okay. See these guys starting to settle in now. Tie score, just under seven minutes left. You saw both teams trying to establish some pace, but as you can see, the transition defense, important for both clubs. They don't want to see each other get into a run or that flow. You see how quickly Northern Kentucky's picking up Cole Gentry. Got to pick him up more than that, though. He will burn you. And he does right there. Cole Gentry, his first bucket of the game. Strong move to the basket. I mean, quick doesn't even describe Cole Gentry, but I just love his acceleration. And now he rips the ball right out of Tyler Sharp's hands, but possession arrow will favor the Norse. We talked about Cole Gentry keeping his dribble alive, right? Head up, a little hesitation. And you can't give him that lane the way Jalen Tate did with no help side on the back. Gotta love what Cole Gentry has been able to accomplish so far for Wright State, a kid that followed Scott Nagy to Wright State after he originally had signed on with South Dakota State, transferred into the program. And last year, you think about their NCAA tournament run, the beginning of the year, he was still transferring, so could not play. But talking to Scott Nagy at the beginning of the year last year, he said, wait till we get Cole Gentry on the court. Wait till you see what kind of team we're going to be. Well, they ended up in the NCAA tournament. Jalen Tate, again, some good defense from Skylar Potter. I believe they're going to get him for the foul. And it will be... Potter's first. Potter and Tate with some extra words after the play. Yep. We've seen these games can get a little chippy. I think it's you. I think it's your presence and ability. You really, you agitate the players on the floor. You get them riled up. 
I, I must. I don't know what's going on. And Jalen Tate and Skylar Potter. Well, we saw a couple of weeks ago, of course, in the Horizon League opener, Loud and Love and Jordan Blount for UIC getting a little chippy. And now Bo throws it away. Yeah, there's some miscommunication there. Trying to look back door when the defense overplays, that's exactly the right move, but when you don't time it right, that's what happens. And to shoot down for right stage. Great screen and roll action from Cole Gentry and Loud Love, who can't convert. And NKU keeps near steal from the Raiders. Jalen Tate going in, gets the bucket and a foul. Strong move against Love and lays it in and has a chance for three. Well, Jalen Tate. Doesn't give up on the play. He goes from on the floor one end to getting it back and going full steam ahead to the basket here. Great hesitation and angle to the rim. It took some contact from Love and ended up on his feet. That doesn't happen very often. Best gets called for the foul. And so for Allen, that is his first. And now Jalen Tate. Just a 62% free throw shooter. Jalen Tate, of course, the son of Jermaine Tate, played at Ohio State in Cincinnati. His brother, Jay Sean Tate, you probably remember, played at Ohio State, graduating last year, had an excellent career there. Family of good hoopsters. And now a foul coming up. And it'll be on Loud and Love. That is his second personal. And that just comes from getting better position. Forcing him into having to foul you from trying to box you out. That's just hustle right there. Great job by Sharp. So Loud Love's first foul, which is that bump foul at the top of the key. And this one with five minutes left. And if I'm in Kentucky, yeah, of course I'm trying to identify Loud Love. Get him into foul trouble and force somebody else to beat me. And if you can do two things. Get loud and love in foul trouble and try to keep the ball out of the hands of Cole Gentry. You've done just about everything you can do to dismantle a decent one-two combination, I think, for Wright State. It's the top of their offense right there. So take that apart, you've got a good shot. It seems like a lot of teams are trying to do that with Love because he's inviting contact where he's playing underneath right. in the paint. If he bangs bodies with somebody else and he ends up with a couple of fouls, take that player out of the lineup. Big difference. Parker Ernsthausen, the feet underneath for Vest, ended the shot clock down to two. Ernsthausen muscles it up, can't get it to go, and the rebound to both. Tate driving baseline. Sharp passed up the three, trying to throw it underneath, but threw it away. Yeah, Sharp knew it. Trying to do too much on that play. He had a wide open Zanai Robinson to his left. And as well as Northern Kentucky moves the ball in that sequence, you could feel that they were just getting too excited about the pass, not looking for the shot. Moving the crowd here instead of making the play easy. Now on the drive, here's Smith, the miss, and the rebound to Tate. Tate the kick to the corner, Robinson. A foul coming up underneath. And it brings us to a timeout, Northern Kentucky. A three-point lead at home against Wright State. Top two teams in scoring defense, and we're seeing that on display.
Well, tomorrow we'll have an afternoon ACC College Hoop doubleheader for you on ESPN. Noon Eastern, 12th ranked Tar Heels taking on Louisville at the Dean Dome. Then Zion Williamson, number one Duke in Tallahassee. They'll take on the number 13 Knowles and a Sonic Blockbuster. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. And our Saturday showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Back here in what's been a defensive battle so far. 22-19 the lead for the Northern Kentucky Norse and Bill Wampler at the free throw line for Wright State. Wampler four points here in this first half, an 80% free throw shooter. Even though he is coming off the bench, still 11th in the Horizon League in scoring. Such a chess match between these two teams, Brooke, but as we enter this final three minute and 40 second stretch of the first half, what are you looking to see from both teams? I think a, just a feeling of success and executing. For Northern Kentucky, you can see it's all about ball movement and spacing, trying to get some some movement off the high screen and roll, uh, just looking for the best shot. You know, Sometimes their offense is just predicated on motion movement, screens, and keeping it spaced. And for Wright State, so much of it is dictated by Cole Gentry. With, with Loudon Love out of the game, where are they going to find their scoring? Parker Ernsthausen has not hit a three, Jordan since their Mississippi game back on December. It's December 22nd, so we've got to get it going. Ernst Housen just two for 21 from the field in league play, but that one will fall. Parker Ernst Housen getting it on the board. He's now got four in the first half. And we're talking to John Brandon before the game, he's, or rather Scott Nagy, he said that he feels like the shots will start to fall for yeah. Ernst Housen. He yeah. thinks it's just been a a little bit of a weird stretch for him, but he has full confidence in his ability. Yeah, you got to keep shooting. And he said it's not even a discussion that I've had with him. He knows his role. He knows his, his lane with our team, and he's not a primary scorer. So if he can just continue to defend, rebound, set some good screens, the points will come. And now Faulkner. It's the first free throw. Good job by Ernst Housen to keep his balance. Use his balance off the body of McDonald to get that shot. He's got terrific length, so at 6'11", he can get the looks that he wants. And I like how he stayed patient on that possession. And the second one falls for Faulkner. So Mason Faulkner, or Trayvon Faulkner, I knew I was going to do that. Mason Faulkner, of course, last year's team. <laughs> but Trayvon Faulkner is one of the new players for this Northern Kentucky team this year. And they had some turnover. Certainly Drew McDonald, Dantez Walden, Tyler Sharp, you're used to seeing them. But Denai Robinson, a new point guard for this team this year. Carson Williams is no longer in the program. Jeff Garrett, Mason Faulkner, who transferred to Western Carolina, but what's been constant about Northern Kentucky is that there's been a standard set here, and whoever comes into this program now knows that they have to be on their game to play at the top of the horizon league. McDonald off on the three try. Mark Hughes gets the rebound. Hughes a three the last time down the floor. offense for Wright State. Nobody in the paint. You see what a difference it makes without loud and love, but it allows the lane to open up. Mark Hughes a three on the prior possession. This time takes it to the rim. A nice drive. Five straight points for Mark Hughes and now a four point lead for Wright State on the road. Mark Hughes on a personal 5-0 run for Wright State and the Raiders over the last minute, have now taken a four-point lead on Northern Kentucky on the road. Walton locked up in the corner, and Ernsthausen went flying into the seats. Well, how about that? 
nearly ran over that woman, and he, he says, are no you drinks, okay? Yeah. I think, let's take a look. Good double team, and the length at 6'11". Oh, yeah, that could have that could have ended a lot worse than it did. Yes. When you sit in the front row, though, you got to have your head on a swivel, right? Yeah. Tyler Sharp now fouled as he spins into the lane. Tyler Sharp, so good at staying low to the ground. And that center of gravity for him. I've really enjoyed so far watching this matchup between Sharp and Cole Gentry. Tyler Sharp. It's the first as John Brandon looks on. Fifth head coach in Northern Kentucky basketball history. Putting together quite a resume so far. 80 seconds to play here in our first half. Wampler able to keep almost a steal by the Dantes Walton and now on the drive, the miss from Ernsthausen. Second opportunity, it's Malachi Smith. Zanai Robinson now on the drive. Grad transfer from Norfolk State, getting a lot of responsibility in this final year of his collegiate career. Sharp into the paint against a double and draws a foul. How about Tyler Sharp there? I mean, how hard does he play? Gets swiped across the face, keeps his dribble so low. Watch him make something out of nothing between three right stake defenders. Still working. <laughs> That's a guy who, by definition, goes hard in the paint. Tyler Sharp so far tonight, 10 points. Just a kid who, we mentioned, transferred from Louisville where he was a walk on and then walked on here. Played last year, earned the scholarship. When you watch a play, you see a guy that believes in himself, bets on himself, and you can see how hard he works because he knows he truly appreciates what he has. Yeah, and he's got some blood on his lip right now, so then we'll have to get that taken care of. But you know what that comes from, Jordan? Getting in the gym. 6 a.m., practicing with the guys after school, going for runs at night, paying att attention to his nutrition. He said, I'm a candy guy, so I had to figure out a way to avoid that milkshake that I like to eat at the end of the night. Like I, I would eat healthy all day long, and then I'd spoil it with a milkshake, so I had to cut that out. Well, I mean, now you're going to make me want to go to Graders after the game. Obviously. What you're telling me. Obviously. By the way, coming up on the E-Trade Halftime Report, Chris Cotter, Dallin Cuff, and Sean Farnham will preview Duke and Florida State. we got first half highlights and tomorrow's Saturday slate of games. So be sure to tune in for the E-Trade Halftime Report. I don't know if they're going to have graders like on set for them in the studio. I guess we'll have to find out. Sounds good now. See yeah, what you've done? You know, I, don't, I don't think graders is sold in Bristol, Connecticut. I do know it's available <laughs> in Chicago, but guys, we would love to treat you. You don't know what you're missing down here. Tyler Sharp. The sharp shooting continues for him. Two-second difference between the shot and the game clock here in this first half. Trayvon Falker staying right with Gentry. Now six to shoot for right stick. And to the shot clock, Wampler's got to put it up. Can't get it to go. And... The clock expires, and that will do it for the first half of play. Didn't know if we were going to get a shot clock violation, but to no avail. And at the end of the first half, Wright State with a 30-27 to lead on Northern Kentucky. And a battle of the two teams that were predicted to finish atop the Horizon League. Stay tuned. Our E-Trade Halftime Report is coming up next. Mark Hughes and Wright State with a three-point lead here in Highland Heights.
Look at this act they had going at halftime here at NKU. This will eventually end with a throwdown, but this is athleticism right here in Island Heights, Kentucky. Wright State with a 30 to 27 lead on Northern Kentucky as we welcome you back to the bb &T Arena alongside Brick Weisbrod. I'm Jordan Burnfield. The halftime guys, certainly a lot of athleticism. We definitely saw it in the first half too. Brooke, this was kind of the game that we expected, I think, in a lot of ways, right? You have two teams that are atop the Horizon League and scoring defense, and every bucket was tough to get. Yeah, it really was, and I think we saw both teams struggle to get their offense going. You know, Northern Kentucky not shooting well from three, and meanwhile, Wright State having to go inside to get their points. Northern Kentucky got to the line at times, but what you saw was Tyler Sharp take control of that offense for Northern Kentucky, and Loud Love getting into foul trouble for Wright State really changed up their offense. Yeah, you mentioned going inside to Loud and Love. He had a big first half. Yeah, it, it was, you know, you got to determine your big guy and give him touches early on. You see, it really working for his shots. He had eight points on four of seven shooting, but Jordan, he was just in the game for 12 minutes. And his impact on the game is incredible. When he steps on the floor, they're a much better team, obviously. And then for Northern Kentucky, you see Tyler Sharp just prodding into the defense, keeping his dribble alive. And out in the open floor, this is where he does a lot of his damage. Look, change of directions, one, two, three times, splits defenders, and finishes at the rim. Take a look at our first half stats now. Wright State shot the ball a lot better than Northern Kentucky did. And this is an NKU team, Brooke, that takes a lot of three-point shots. In the first half, they went just two of 15. You figure if that evens out a little more, they have to like their chances in the second half. Yeah, they make nine threes a game, so I would expect them to continue to shoot the ball. Donald, he's really their three-point shooter. But you gotta get other guys involved. John Brandon's team Trying to win a tough one at home tonight against Wright State. Neither team has led this game by more than four. We've had seven ties and six lead changes, which I believe is a prerequisite in the Horizon League, right? Every game that we've had so far has come down to the end. So we're looking forward to another one. Yeah, we would be of no help in Vegas. <laughs> Like, don't ask us. It's the same way I feel about filling out my bracket when the tournament starts. Like, don't ask me. I don't know. Just let it happen. Allen Best with the first bucket of the second half. Senior, who is in a family full of Wright State alumni. Mark Best, his father, and his mother, Laura Best, both in the crowd here tonight. Here's Drew McDonald, a three from the wing. I love that play. Simple exchange, the screen and roll. McDonald's able to pop. And because Sharp's so dangerous off the bounce, you got to stay in front of him. Just a simple pass back to McDonald, who hit a confident three. McDonald has hit all three threes for NKU tonight. Out in love underneath, muscles it in off glass so interesting to watch how different their games are, right? The big guys, Loud and Love, so good at footwork, as you mentioned in the open. You know, at the same time, a big body, whereas Drew McDonald, a big body with more range. And now Dantes Walton trying to show the range and gets okay. the roll. That's, that's his home court of a bounce <laughs> as you can get right there. Soft rim, give it to me. I was just going to say, when you were at Coastal Carolina, you made sure that the rim was going to give you those threes, right? Absolutely. Ernst Howes in the miss on the three. Now Gentry on the second chance, no. And Love underneath. Three tries, but to no avail for the Raiders. Not a great shot for Loud and Love. I like the rebound, but go ahead and reset your offense there. No need to take a quick shot. In traffic, defended, off balance. That time Zanai Robinson at a wide open three just couldn't get it. And now Vest buries from deep. Allen Vest State. didn't score in the first half. Rookie's got five here in the second. The Wright State didn't shoot the ball either very well from three. Just one of eight. Now hit their second three-point shot. Are they going to start falling here? Are we going to rain? Hit ice cold in the first half really for both teams. We got a winter storm warning coming through tonight. Maybe the guys are just getting a taste of it early. I was just going to say, it's supposed to snow tomorrow, but still lit on the basket here for Northern Kentucky from deep. I would love if it rained here in the Cincinnati area <laughs> instead of snow. Anyone that has to catch a flight, definitely rooting for rain. Mm -hmm. 
Louisville and North Carolina, part of that doubleheader of great action tomorrow. Anytime you can see Zion, too, you just say Duke. He's must-see TV. Yeah. But North Carolina is one of the better teams overall, I think, that you'll see in the country. Luke May, an incredible player and one of those upperclassmen that Roy Williams can really count on. Everybody talking about, hey, when's Nasir Little going to do what Nasir Little was supposed to do? And my whole thing is, give these guys some time. Not everybody's going to come in and be a Zion Williamson or R.J. Bear. And we're seeing that with Cam Reddish, right? Mm -hmm. He's trying to get involved in that offense. And the Duke staff, some of the coaches there said, we're not worried about him. But you're comparing yourself to two other top players in Zion Williamson, who's scored 30 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists in his game against Wake Forest the other day. You got to be you, and if if it just means getting in the gym a little more, get in the gym a little more. But not everything's just going to fly and come to you your freshman year in college. It doesn't work like that. Nice feet underneath, but Faulkner cannot finish. Northern Kentucky just struggling right now to put it in the basket. Cold Gentry from deep, and that one rolls out. Drew McDonald flirting with another double-double. Ten points, eight rebounds tonight. He had another miss, and Ernst Housen pulls it down. And McDonald almost at his ninth double-double of the year. It's 14th in the country in that stat. Mark Hughes right to the rim. <laughs> He's so smooth at getting to the rim. Mark Hughes having an excellent night tonight. He missed one shot. Dantez Walton, the quick answer. What a terrific job NKU has done on Cole Gentry. Just two points tonight. We identified him as the head of the snake. Oh, loud love. Lost the handle, and it comes out to McDonald. He, he looks a bit off key tonight. Footwork not quite as quick as sharp. I wonder if those two fouls early in the first half got into his head a bit. Here's McDonald. He's been the only one to put it in for two. <laughs> he well, just went with the Jordan shrug as he came back down the floor after knocking that one down. So did Loud Love. McDonald and Loud Love both did the Jordan shrug. One goes, all right. The other goes, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> McDonald now at 13 and 10, 43 career double doubles. And tried to feed Walton underneath. It's out of bounds, brings us to a timeout on the floor. NKU hanging tough, they just can't get a lot of shots to fall. Yeah, Mark Hughes off the dribble right by Tyler Sharp, smooth to the basket. And hey, what are you going to do about this? It's just home cooking. I don't know either. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Papa John's. Two medium, one topping pizzas, just $6 each. You are looking at members of the best family playing at Wright State, and at Wright State, it has been all in the best family. There's the parents, Mark Vest and Laura Vest. They are the parents of Alan Vest, who is the most recent Wright State Raiders. But of course, Matt Vest played at Wright State, and Sarah Vest was a member of the coaching staff for the women's basketball team. And of course, Mark, he was pretty good. Wright State Hall of Famer playing in the 80s. And Alan, as he was growing up, got to come to the basketball court as a young player when Mark was working as the radio analyst following his playing career and would get to shoot hoops with the players on both Wright State and the opponent. He's been playing basketball in that Nutter Setter gym since he was a little tight. And I talked to him before the game. He said he wanted to be a Wright State Raider his whole life. Yes, he was recruited by other schools, but he always knew he was going to come to Wright State. And after being on the bench for a couple of years, dealing with a hip injury, this year he's gotten an opportunity and is making the most of it. A regular starter now for the Raiders. So I suppose you could say they are invested I like it. You well like that done. pun? Yeah. Usually it's my role to come up with the pun, but you did a great job yeah. there. Yeah, it just, I felt it. It was right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent. And Jalen Tate, by the way, is now wearing the number one instead of 11. Got some blood on his jersey earlier. 
Chris Bode picks up the foul right there. That is his third. And now the inbound coming from Wampler as Northern Kentucky shows a press look. Here is Best now working against Sharp with the left hand. Can't get it to go, and it's an offensive foul. Great defense. I'll tell you what, Tyler Sharp has been dialed into this game since the tip. I love the intensity with which he's playing. And watch his footwork here. This is a perfect example of how to guard somebody, not use your hands, to use your chest and your lateral quickness. Look at him. Just beating Alan Best to the step and to the spot. Feet firmly planted in place. Terrific job taking that charge. And Tyler Sharp, certainly an effort guy for this team. Now second in minutes for Northern Kentucky. Here is Tate going to the bucket and puts it in over Hughes. Love inside, and a foul coming up against Northern Kentucky. They thought there was a clean block, but Chris Boat will pick up his fourth personal foul. Yeah, Boat a little upset after that play. He felt like it was a clean block against Loud and Love, and you see him start to react there. And what you may not catch is at the end of this play, Tyler Sharp comes right up to him grabs his jersey by the chest and just pulls him right toward him. This is a seven-footer, mind you. Saying, hey, get your act together. We need you in this game. Don't get upset by the calls. And Chris Bode, I have a feeling in the next year when Drew McDonald graduates and moves on is going to end up being a real valuable piece. Look at that. Yeah. That's leadership right there. Grabbing his jersey saying, hey, you good? We need you. Be bigger. And that's the former walk-on yeah. telling him what to do. I could use somebody like that for me also. Calm me down a bit, but... Ooh, look at that Euro step. Okay. Tyler Sharp doing some things tonight. Shows off the nice move, and now Cole Gentry called for his third foul. I'm looking for that screen and roll. Could have possibly gotten that wraparound pass to Drew McDonald, but Cole Gentry... And moved quick enough to get in the way. And to the Norse's credit tonight, Brooke, they have not been able to hit from deep at all. They're 5 of 20 from 3. So how do you counter that? They're trying to go aggressively to the basket, and Sharp's been one of those guys to do it. Yeah, I think that's exactly the right game plan. You know, attack the paint. Even with loud and love there, you've been able to draw them into foul trouble. He's only got two still, but just seems to be playing off tonight. Loud's not his typical self. Underneath Potter, Joko knocked it away, but it goes right to Love for the bucket. Paul Joko got the block. And sometimes you get a bad bounce. You got one there. That time Wampler knocks it out of bounds. Here's the follow-up from Loud Love. Good entry pass. Defense. Wright State keeping that play alive. And Bill Wampler hang time himself. There's Tate trying to get some hang time on Hughes, but a foul called against Mark. That's number two on Mark Hughes, the senior out of Youngstown. Games between these two teams have really become much more of a rivalry. Obviously, Northern Kentucky is new to this league, but when you consider that schools are only about an hour apart and the last few years these two teams have been among the top of the league both coaches have said yeah I mean we haven't maybe had the longevity in terms of years in this rivalry but it's starting to build mm -hmm. you can feel it I mean it's intense you got guys out there talking we saw a little uh, extracurricular activity early on in this game and Tate's been fired up every time he makes a play he wants to say something Jalen Tate 10 points tonight
Vest underneath. Love puts it in over McDonald. Out in love now with 14. Tate into the paint. Nice move from Jalen Tate. He's talking after every bucket. Mm -hmm. He's got to be careful because that's one of the biggest things officials have been paying attention to this year. Any celebration, even if you look players in the eye, which, I mean, Jordan, to me is ridiculous, the amount of technicals that are being given out for celebrating. But that's the way it is this year. You've got to adjust if you're a player. It also feels like you can't get a technical for looking at someone the wrong way. Yeah, you can. I know. Because we've seen right. it happen. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Here's Walton. Off on the three try. There's best underneath, leaves off for love. It'll stay with Wright State when we come back. Jalen Tate shooting 57% on the year. Tonight, he's going 100 in the lane. Finishing, little chat, little emphasis. I like it. For more Horizon League events, sign up now for ESPN+. Plus. Number one, Duke has a rising star. Hold up, let me get up in it now. I'm here to win it now. But the Seminoles are issuing a no-fly zone in Tallahassee. Number one, Duke. Number 13, Florida State. Saturday at 2 on ESPN. That's going to be a fun one, Duke and Florida State. Duke is just 2-5 and five in their last seven road games as a number one team. Florida State has been a team over the years in the ACC, Brook, that... It's tough to go down there and play in Tallahassee. How often do you see a team go down there and just not have anything against the Knowles? You know, the fan base down there is pretty strong. Football, basketball, doesn't matter. And you know, with Duke, this year it's been the traveling Beatles, basically. So we're going to have a, a full, full house. And it's really been fun to watch Duke and, and obviously you know, the talented freshmen that they have. And just to see Coach K and his staff put them together in a way that I mean, these guys are playing for each other. There's no selfishness out there, and that's hard to say. You've got basically the number one, two, and possibly three picks in the draft on the same team, and these guys aren't playing selfish basketball? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it, it makes you think about some of those Kentucky teams in the last five, six years that had all those draft picks coming off the roster, and there's so much pressure on those teams because you have one year. Right. That's it. They're going pro. So what can you do in that one season? Now a foul coming up. Dantez Walton pick up his second personal. Wright State really has tried to make sure that Loudon Love touches the basketball a lot. He's got 14 points tonight, 7 of 11 from the field. And he's been good underneath. Well, if you're NKU, you're not exactly worried about Loudon Love at this point because you've handled Cole Gentry just two points on the night. I'd say that's a, a win so far for them. Here's McDonald going over Love, and the foul is called. Three on Loud and Love. McDonald going to work on Love. Yeah, not a lot of contact there. Love going to get called for the foul anyways. Doesn't argue about it. Loud and Love is such an imposing presence that I think that may be part of it too, Brooke, is that, you know, he's got that sort of football player's body. So people are expecting him to create contact, but I think he's done a really good job as we've gotten to see him play more and more, learning how to really not be too physical underneath. I can't speak for the big guys. You know, I, I was never that one to, to really seek out contact. But yeah, you're right. you got a guy with a body like Loud and Love, it makes you think of Shaq who would get hammered all the time with fouls and barely touch anybody, they'd go flying and then he'd get called for the foul. So just a result of, of having that big body and he's going to really have to utilize that footwork a lot better not get into foul trouble and finish some of these shots. Ooh. There's a block from Tate from behind. <laughs> Tate's the showman of this team. You can really tell he's trying to get it fired up. Here's
Here's Joko. Drives in on Wampler and the offensive foul. Yeah, Joko didn't know what he wanted to do with the ball. And Wampler with a terrific setup. Yeah, he read that play, he felt it coming. Now, why not just pull up and take a jump shot right there? That's what's missing from the college game, Jordan, the mid-range jump shot. I love it. I will talk about it so I'm blue in the face. I've literally gotten the emails from people that say, stop talking about the mid-range jump shot. And I'm not, I'm not doing it. So you can keep sending them to me. I don't care. So is that your game at Coastal? Absolutely. Mid-range jumper? Because you get behind the first line of defense, and it's before the post player can come get you. So shoot it, like just like love. Look at you, three-sport athlete at Coastal, 2001 Big South Basketball Player of the Year. I figured it out at some point. You knew what you were doing. You had a great career. Northern Kentucky, its biggest lead of the game, and Gentry on the drive, and the blocking foul is called. And Gentry took some contact on the way. I'd be seeing him hold on to his left hip. And here's Loud Love passing up on a shot, leading to a turnover. And this is where NKU can punish you out in the open floor. Joko, a much better job finishing there. Cole Gentry now with the free throw line. The right state. Brooke, you mentioned before he's got just two points, make it three tonight. But Gentry second on the team in scoring, averaging over 14 per contest. Yeah, they have limited his touches. They've done a great job defensively on ball with him and also off the ball. They're paying attention to him so he can't just move freely and then get an open shot. Cole Gentry gets a couple free throws to go, but Wright State trailing by six, 9-13 left here in Highland Heights, Kentucky. Jalen Tate has 12 points tonight. He's five of seven from the field, and he is also unbeaten in terms of the trash talk on the floor. Right? Yeah, he's got it all going tonight. I love how aggressively he's playing. Look, he ends up on the floor at the beginning of this play. But at the end, picks himself up, says, no, I'm not finished with this. I'm taking it right to the hoop. I'm going to let you all know about it, too. But he's got to be careful, Jordan, because this season, today's age, they are calling technicals left and right on guys talking. He's also leading the game, by the way, in numbers, Warren. He was in 11. Now he's wearing right. one. There was blood on the jersey. <laughs> but when you played, how much trash were you talking? Okay, I didn't start it. I'll put it that way. Okay. But if somebody started with me, you weren't like I'm, I'm sinking this stop. J over you. Well, I mean, I'm just going to prove it with my game, and then after I do that, I'm going to let you know, and I won't stop letting you know. Nice. Just, you're going to push the button. It's, it's go time. There's Tate. He's got 14 now. Playing with confidence in Northern Kentucky now up eight, and Joko. Yep, As Cole Gentry goes down, yep. Joko was given the Matumbo There's whack no Matumbo of the allowed finger. In here. No, no. And Joko is going to get called for that technical. Yeah, Brandon not happy with that call whatsoever, but he's going to have to have a conversation. Yeah, freshman, you're not going to get away with that. And Paul Joko, the redshirt freshman out of France, who has turned into a really good shot blocking player but that time really just got gentry that's and then let's go with the finger the, wag that's not enough for the finger wag i'm sorry that, it's not yeah. it's not showmanship enough like if you throw the ball maybe into like the the 10th row or something <laughs> or you save it you block it you save it at least to a dunk then sure maybe and joko gonna get an earful right now for brennan well this could be a huge play in the game because now cole gentry who's an excellent free throw shooter, does get the roll, so he hits two, and now Wright State has the basketball. So this one finger wag, you know, this is an eight-point game. If they had a three here, all of a sudden it's back to one possession. You see the ripple it causes, yeah. right? And, and here you are just, you know, trying to get excited about your team, but you've got to do it subtle. And I'll tell you what, Jalen Tate and Cole Gentry, I think, are having a good time about it right now. He's joking around. We've seen the Jordan shrug in this game. We've seen the Matumbo finger wag. We've seen a few of these things. Here's Hughes underneath. Now Ernsthausen from deep off target in the rebound comes to take.
Tate the drive and the foul. Malachi Smith picking up the personal. Number two on the freshman from Belleville, Illinois. Tate going baseline, keeping his balance, doing a great job of attacking the basket there. Malachi Smith, he just, he, he's got to get help and he's got to ask for help. Well, tomorrow we will have an afternoon of ACC College Hoop doubleheader for you on ESPN. Noon Eastern, 12th ranked Tar Heels hosting Louisville at the Dean Dome then. This guy named Zion, he's pretty good. Number one Duke there in Tallahassee to take on the number 13 Knowles and a Sonic blockbuster. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. So you can watch anywhere. Our Saturday showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Jalen Tate splitting the free throws now, 15 points. In tonight's game on six of eight from the field, he's got five rebounds. Use the skip pass. Best almost lost it. Now Wampler right to the rack. Nice hesitation from Bill Wampler. He's got seven. Recovery by Loudon Love. He came out to hedge hard on that screen. Still able to roll back to keep McDonald from getting the ball in the paint. Now five to shoot for the Norris, and Dantez Walton can't get the roll. Best in the corner. They go inside for Loudon Love against McDonald with the left. No. Second chance, yes. Well, he's had to fight pretty hard for these points tonight, but not giving up. And that offensive glass has been kind to Wright State tonight. He's doing a good job of converting. They've got nine offensive rebounds. And a timeout taken by John Brennan and Northern Kentucky. Well, Bill Wampler and Wright State, they were down by eight. Now they're down by just three. Coming up next, the GEICO ESPN High School Basketball Showcase presented by Buick live from West Memphis, Arkansas. We will feature California's Rancho Christian High School taking on Tennessee Powerhouse East Memphis High School and this man, James Wiseman. He's the number one ranked player in the ESPN 100 for the class of 2019. Chosen to stay at home for his college career, signing on with the Memphis Tigers. What a get for first year head coach Penny Hardaway. Yeah, you talk Penny Hardaway and Memphis basketball, they just go together so well, don't they? The city is so excited to have him back. Ticket sales are up, Memphis basketball. And it's good to, good to have that brand back. Absolutely. I had a pair of Penny shoes when I was a kid. Same. Those were awesome. With, well, the, with uh, the blue waves on them. Yeah. Do you remember those? I think I had them my sophomore junior year in high school. I'm probably dating myself right now. But yeah, I, vividly I remember what they looked like. And, of course, the commercials. Oh, yeah. The little Penny? Yeah. That was Chris Rock, right? I believe it was. Let's go with it. Our producer, Damon, says that's confirmed. So right. that's good to know that we were able to get that reference. <laughs> Well, kind of cool, I guess. Yeah. Wampler underneath makes it a one-point game. Northern Kentucky led by eight in the second half just a few minutes ago. The right state is chipped away. Really, it was after that technical foul on Joko. It has sparked right state. There's McDonald. Drew McDonald, another double-double tonight. 17 points in the game, 11 rebounds. He gets that close and in that kind of positioning. It's automatic. Mark Hughes for three to tie it. How good has Mark Hughes been tonight? Quietly, though. Six of seven, but hit both of his threes. He's got 14 points tonight. Well, it's a Horizon League Friday, so it should be tied late, right? True that. 
Knocked out of bounds, it'll stay with the Norse. Loud in love, a big reason why Wright State has stayed in this game. 16 points, four boards for the sophomore center. Preseason All Horizon League first team player. 11 3 Wright State run since that technical foul on the Norse. McDonald thought Sharp would cut, and he did not. It's just a rare mistake that you'll see from Drew McDonald. You saw Tyler Sharp instantly communicate with him. This is a team that talks a lot, so you're not going to see a lot of unforced errors, especially turnovers or come from missed pass. Seeing their shoot around, everybody's talking. Oh, yeah, it's great. Loud and love inside. Wright State almost lost it. Now it's Wampler for three. No. And the rebound to take. Tate the drive on best and puts it in. Now, that play, you can give partial credit to John Brandon because he got really agitated with his guys and started giving that movement sign does not like the ball to stick oh great entry pass into love could not get it to fall that was halfway down yeah not been a lot of love for Loudon here tonight in this building Jalen Tate 12 of his 17 points in the second half Feeds inside, Faulkner puts it in over Wampler. <laughs> Ten to shoot for Wright State. Gentry for three, off target. Smith grabs the long rebound. And then on the drive, we've got a stoppage on the floor with 3.32 to go. Ball on Tate, NKU up four. Don't go anywhere. Wright State trailing by four, and all they've needed is loud and love. Need a lot of love here in the second half if you're Wright State. You've got to keep feeding the ball. Even through a double team, loud and love so strong, he's able to finish. He's had a couple of close shots not go his way. But when they can feed him in sort of a, a way that he can, is headed toward the basket, doesn't have to do a whole lot of work. And then he can get those buckets, and then defensively, tough to keep Drew McDonald out of the paint. And once you do, he can hurt you from the three-point line as well. He's got so much in his arsenal. Drew McDonald, 17 points, 12 rebounds tonight. He's been so consistent throughout his career. Nine double-doubles this year, 43 in his career. And that's really what makes a star, right? In every game, yes. you can count on Drew McDonald to give you close to 10 rebounds and certainly more than 10 points, averaging 18.6 Points per game, 10 rebounds per game. Well, even when he's not scoring, you know, he'll find a way to impact the game. And he, he feels like his job is to find a way to help the team win, no matter what that is. Malachi Smith comes through with the free throws. Freshman makes it a two-point game and now goes to the bench for Scott Nagy. Mark Hughes back in, the Raiders' defensive specialist, who has been really good on the offensive end tonight with 14 points. McDonald lost the handle and Wampler got it. Wright State can tie or perhaps take the lead. Defense! 
Clock trickles under three minutes. Eight to shoot for Wright State. And they give him a screen. Gentry inside love. Two to shoot. Puts it up. No. But he's somehow able to grab the ball. And now a jump. And possession arrow will send it to Northern Kentucky. That's good hustle. Loud love. Looked a bit unsure what he wanted to do with the basketball. Finally getting that shot. You see Cole Gentry with a nice entry pass. And a good attempt by Sharp to get that charge. And it takes three guys. Everything Faulkner's got to hold on to that ball. <laughs> yeah, you can that, understand why. Hanging on for dear life. I mean, Loudon could have picked him and the ball up at the same time. Did like a <laughs> bicep curl. Yeah. I think you'd probably get a tech for bench pressing the opposing player. <laughs> I'd like to see that. Out there. Hey, it'd be worth it. And another steal. Last two possessions, Northern Kentucky has turned it over to the Raiders. Gentry, the strong take, and ties the game. Now, really selling the hesitation. Oh, my goodness, Tate. On the other end, Woo. Tate now with 19. Zero to 100 real quick. Two-point lead for Northern Kentucky under two minutes. Gentry, the runner is good. Just lulls you, doesn't he? You don't know what he's going to do, and that's what makes him so good. He doesn't give it away with his face, with his body. He is a master poker player out there on the basketball floor. Knotted up at 62 yet again. Andrew McDonald, the senior, wills that one in over love. Wants the crowd to get up to. Says, come on, BB and T. We need you. From 500 to 9,000. They're on their feet here. Inside they go to Love. Almost lost it. Puts it up. No foul call. Late in the shot clock. Who's got it? It's going back to Northern Kentucky. John Brandon calls timeout. The Norse has it. And a two-point lead with 51.6 to go. The right State's teammates trying to pick up Loud Love, who's frustrated with himself, unable to convert. You see him working so hard, but the scrappiness of Northern Kentucky. Tyler Sharp getting a hold of that ball, calling a timeout. What a heads-up play. All right, students, listen, I see you. You're all still on break, but you show up anyways. You show up strong. That's how you do it, Horizon League. Tyler Sharp, cut lip and all, willing his team forward. A two-point lead, and now a review is coming. They want to look at the clock and check how much time remains. As it stands, 51.6. And a two-point lead. Northern Kentucky this year is 10-0 here on the bb &T arena floor. Wright State looking for just its second road win this year. And let's see where this tie-up occurs. It might be a little more like 52, At maybe 52.2. Yeah, 52.9, 52, yeah. 52 yeah. But the officials were on top of that call. Yeah. Tyler Sharp, look at that, gets the timeout. Yeah, he's the MVP tonight. With Loud and Love Kentucky bearing down on him. Yeah. Don't play scared at all. you got to love it. You know, between what Sharp's done, what Jalen Tate has done, and, of course, Drew McDonald, 19 points. But Jalen Tate, he shot 8 of 10 from the floor tonight, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, and a steal. Yeah. Tyler Sharp, certainly a developing player, but the junior out of Mount Washington, Kentucky, is really cool story and plays so hard. And so even though he's had a couple of miscommunications tonight, the net positive with him is really significant. 
Well, tonight on ESPN, after Lakers Jazz and after the buzzer, it's Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. He'll have his midseason NBA MVP, plus Teddy Bruschi on the Rams' biggest challenge against the Cowboys and why the Chargers' game plan has to change against the Patriots. Sports Center with SVP, 12:30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. It'll be a good weekend of college basketball, a good weekend of football. I'm just going to be on my couch consuming all of this. <laughs> well, I will be in route to Gainesville, hopefully. So I'll have to catch it on the uh, ESPN Plus app. It's become my new best friend. It really is so, great, though. It's nice. I like it. Here's McDonald from the wing. Knocks down the three! They, they don't have to go the three route right now, but they don't have any time to waste. They got to get right to the rim. Five point lead thanks to the senior Drew McDonald, and now the foul coming up. Drew McDonald takes Loud Love out to the top of the key. Hands up, still going to knock it down. And I love Drew McDonald, the way he gets the crowd involved, the way he gets the student body involved. The leader of this team, the leader of this university. Absolutely. Drew McDonald, a big reason why Northern Kentucky, since the 16 17 season, is 33 and 4 here at the BBT Arena. This place has been so hard to win at for opponents. And off the miss, it's a rebound for Tate and a foul call. It was tied, it got down to two, and then Drew McDonald with the huge three-point shot. McDonald a 38% three-point shooter, but in this game tonight, he's hit five triples and eight tries. Unfazed. You know, that's what I feel like when I watch him play. He doesn't get too high or too low, but he allows the emotions to come to him. So when he does make a big play, he can get the crowd involved. Pumps up his teammates at the same time. Shot clock is off. Wright State trying to get a steal. They almost do, but then Walton's got it, and he's... I believe they got the foul call back in the backcourt. And they do. And Jalen Tate was ready to rip the rim off of this building. Alan Best picks up his third personal. Jalen Tate has played with great energy tonight. And the Norse trying to keep pace and stay at the top of the Horizon League standings where they've been the last three years. But a miss by Walton and the rebound to Vest. 20 seconds to go, five-point game. Gentry into the paint, puts it up. No, but a foul. Tyler Sharp picks up the foul. Gentry just trying to make it happen himself. I would have liked to have seen him attempt to get a three-point shot. I, Ernst Housen was there on the wing to kick it out to him. This is going to do you much good. I mean, you stop the clock. But you needed a three, not a two. Gentry gets the first. You also are playing, as you said, against the clock. You're down to 11.8. Yeah. That sequence took, what, 10 seconds yeah. off the clock there? Anytime you take extra time to dribble, you're just wasting time anyways, let alone when you desperately need a basket. Gentry gets both free throws. Wright State takes time out. Down by three with 11.8. How much time does Wright State have to try to get a steal? They almost did yeah. on the last possession. Walton came up with it, and then they immediately fouled. At this point, can you, can you go three seconds? Is that too long? No, I think you go for the, the steal immediately. If you don't get it, you've got a foul. Yeah. And you got to understand who you're trying to get to foul, who's out there. So that's the job of the assistant coaches to know who's coming in the team. 
or I'm sorry, who's coming into the game and try to allow the guy who's the worst free throw shooter on the team to catch the inbounds pass. One timeout left for each team. And the possession arrow favors Wright State at this point. For Drew McDonald, I mean, how about the game for him tonight? 22 points, 12 rebounds. Hits the biggest three of the game. You don't think of him necessarily as a three-point shooter, but that is a part of his game, and it's been the biggest part of his game tonight. Yeah, and you see the difference in, in bringing Loudon Love out beyond the paint. Not only does it open up the driving lane for Northern Kentucky, but it forces Love to have to step out, and Drew McDonald can hit a three-point shot over you. It doesn't matter. You see tonight, terrific job, five of eight. This is his ninth double-double of the season. Not going anywhere. Just continues to put up beast numbers here in the Horizon League. One of the reasons why six, since the 16-17 season, Northern Kentucky with the most wins in this league, 33 and 11 is their record. Wright State's been second best at 30 and 14. What is this line about a pass? <laughs> That's like a football play. That's right. Why don't they let Marvin Lewis go around here? And look at that. Northern Kentucky gets the ball down the floor and now Hughes fouls with 2.4. Can we see this again? This yeah. looked like they were lining up for a football play. I love it. I don't even know what's going on here and what the intent of this was. Try to go for the long-term pass, but I like it. Just keep it short and simple, but the look of it was great. I mean, we didn't do a style point segment tonight, but that would earn it for me. <laughs> yeah. That stands out. Absolutely. That was awesome. Well, the Bengals or the Norse? Whatever you think. Tyler Sharp now with 14. <laughs> Pointing to his veins. <laughs> Say a little ice in here, that's all. Nothing wrong. Can't get that one to go. Gentry at the buzzer for three. No good. And the Northern Kentucky Norse do it again here at home. They beat Wright State 68 to 64. And yet again, John Brandon's team defends the bb and arena where they're now 11-0 on this court. Now the difference for me, Jordan, was Northern Kentucky's ability to take Cole Gentry out of this game. He did finish with 12 points, but on 3 of 10 shooting. Loud Love also a difficult night. But then you had outstanding play, of course, from Drew McDonald, yes. But Jalen Tate with 19 on 8 of 10 shooting was an awesome effort. And of course, Tyler Sharp was as tough as they come. And so the Northern Kentucky Norse move to 4-1 and one in the Horizon League. Wright State falls to 2-3. and three. So for Brooke Weisbrod, my name is Jordan Burnfield. Thanking you so much for joining us here in the Queen City. The final score, Northern Kentucky 68, Wright State 64. Coming up next, we go to West Memphis, Arkansas for high school basketball. Thanks so much for watching another exciting Horizon League Friday. Good night.